views, views, views. I don't want to be Mr. Views. <clears throat> the food actually showed up super duper uh, warm, which we were surprised because the driver got lost because the driver was an idiot. So, you know, the past few weeks that we've been quarantined, we've ordered out food a few times and had it delivered a few times. Never had an issue. Person's always able to find the place easily, no problems. Um, yesterday, this guy is a complete moron. He goes to our back gate of our place, which no one goes to, and is, like, screaming that no one can open the gate for him. Like, the back gate doesn't even open. It's an emergency gate for, like, emergency services. So then, he drives, and instead of going to the front gate, he drives by it and goes to an apartment complex near us that's not us. Then he misses the front gate again and goes to the street further down. <laughs> so basically, like, he was here, but it took him, like, 20 minutes to actually get to our place to deliver the food because he was an idiot. <laughs> it's very toxic. This is a time, guys, you're going to want to be very careful about all of your personal information, about all of your accounts that you may have out there. Um, let's just say, obviously, without giving any, you know, big specifics or anything like that, <clears throat> that there are sadly some companies that will take advantage of you now during this pandemic. And what I mean by that is... Um, Keep a lookout for fees that are magically appearing on accounts for no reason. Keep a lookout for all kinds of stuff where normally you'd be like, oh, that's something I could get cleared up right away. Because guess what? During a pandemic, you cannot. All right? Um, there's been two different companies that I've had issues with in the last two weeks. And when I try to call them to get it cleared up, no one answers. I was just on hold for 45 minutes on the pre-stream with a company who never picked up. And of course their excuse will be, oh, it's the pandemic and we've got skeleton crew or whatever. Well, fuck off then. Then don't give me an issue, right? Don't fuck me over, you know, with issues with my account with you. And then maybe, just maybe, I won't have to call you. These fucking people. In particular, what's really frustrating to me is that these companies only operate during business hours. Now I've explained to you guys before how frustrating this is, especially when you live on the West Coast. And a lot of companies are like Midwest or East Coast based. And they expect you to somehow magically live on their time frame. Okay. So in particular, this company that I have an issue with right now is East Coast time. That means that if I have to call them during East Coast hours. You know, they close at 5 p.m. Eastern time, which is fucking 2 p.m. West Coast time. Just think about that. All right. So I called... As soon as I got into my office, you know, I woke up this morning, used the bathroom, washed up a little bit, went downstairs, fed Jasper, you know, did a few things in the kitchen, got my drinks ready, came up to the office, and as soon as I could, got on the phone with these guys. 45-minute wait, and no one picks up, right? It's like, are you kidding me? So then, of course, you look online. No way to talk to anyone on an online chat. Doesn't exist. Uh, no way to schedule a future call. No. So what am I supposed to do? Wake up at, like, 5 in the morning, my time. To call these fucking people and sit on hold for two hours to hopefully get through to talk to someone for five minutes to resolve an issue. And this is how it's going to be for all companies. You know, we're in a worldwide scare, a worldwide situation where we're all just trying to stay alive and keep our loved ones alive and stay healthy. And we got to deal with this extra fucking stress because these companies are basically pieces of shit. Cheers to the first death of the coronavirus in Seattle was just confirmed. What steps are you taking to keep you and your family safe? Uh, nothing. There's nothing you can do. It's called just be healthy. Truth of the matter is, the coronavirus is not an epidemic. The flu virus is more dangerous than the coronavirus. More people worldwide are dying of the flu than coronavirus. The flu is a bigger problem. We are back to the positivity and the fun. I mean, my God, guys, the last week of streams has been so overwhelmingly positive. You know, everyone's been really enjoying the streams, tuning in, interacting, and, of course, supporting to the point where we are on an 18 vest streak. Holy shit. Hold on a second now. See, look at this. <laughs> now I'm getting emails. This is ridiculous. I don't know. I'm going to ignore this for now. I'm seriously not even going to pay attention. It's frustrating the shit out of me. Okay. <clears throat> Let's, uh, let me think about this. Is there anything? Else? Oh, so guys, in, re in regards to subs, since we're mentioning subs and some goals, you might have taken a look at the subs today and said, what the heck happened? Because on Monday, my birthday, we were over 760 subscriptions. Everyone, I, everyone's super excited because we hit so many subs. And again, I am appreciative of doing that. 
But it would be nice if people would not get overzealous. That's what they're doing. Is it like, oh, Phil's gonna do a bunch of special events now. Like, no, I'm not. I'm gonna continue to stream every day and play all the new games and do what I'm good at. And I'm not gonna do a million special events out of nowhere now because we got a bunch of subs. That's ridiculous. You know, people will subscribe. Not that it's a huge deal, because it doesn't, to me, subscriber numbers have never meant a damned thing. So please understand that I am here to have fun with you and to enjoy video games. I'm not here to make a buck. Although, you know, quite frankly, yes, this is my business. That is a cool after effect of having a positive job. Because I'm able to put out an entertaining and fun positive stream for all of you. I find I don't have to harp on the fact that, oh, contributions are important and blah, blah, blah. I just talk about it in this little segment on the pre-stream. We get it out of the way. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and ask all night for people to contribute. That's ridiculous, you know. I'm just here to have fun and play a game. I'm not here to sit here and panhandle all night. So, it is what it is, you know. He says, this is completely wrong, by the way. He said, you say contributions aren't expected, but you get mad at streams when they have low contributions and you say it's a slow night. That's not being mad. That's It's called a factual observation. If I say, all right, guys, FYI, we're having a slow night, and if you'd like to help me, please tip me tonight. It'll help me out. That's not a, a complaint. That's a factual observation. Sometimes, if you're having a slow stream, and you just mention that, people are like, oh, really? It's a slow stream? I want to help out. And then they will. That's not demanding anything. That's just letting people know things are a little slow, and they can help if they want. There's no demands on my streams whatsoever. There never have been. There never will be. But, okay, you seem to think that because you're an asshole. Um, I'm really reliant on, on, you know, basically bringing in as much money as I can on streams. And if I have a slow time or whatever, uh, it stresses me out. And it stresses me out. It does. You know? And that's amazing. Not having to harp on, oh, why didn't you sub? And why aren't you tipping? And blah, blah, blah. That's good that I don't have to do that. I love being a positive streamer and focusing on the positivity of the gameplay and our interactions rather than worrying about money, money, money. Six days a week, I'm live streaming here to pay my bills. If I don't live stream for several days at a time, I lose money. Give me monies! <clears throat> Most likely because of allergies, because it's stupid. Uh, you know, like I said, it's been so hot and sunny this week. Not hot, but sunny this week. And it's making everything bloom outside for spring, and I have allergies. Already, you know, I was sneezing a bit yesterday, and now my, my throat is, like, gunked up. I'm like, I'm not surprised. You know, I'll probably be like this for like weeks until it finally kind of gets gets normal again or I get used to it again. As I as I've stated, um one of the YouTubers that I've watched, uh, first of all, I didn't say there's no commentary. That's not what I said at all. That's completely ridiculous. What I said was this YouTuber is not a live streamer and does not have a webcam. Instead, they do do live commentary over over gameplay just like I used to. It's basically I feel like I'm watching myself in a lot of ways because no webcam you know, improv commentary over gameplay, all right? And I'm watching it, and I'm like, this guy's not so different from me, you know? I mean, in reality, though, is he better? He's he. I would say this particular uh, guy is much better than me at certain styles of games, but at the same time, he's actually not as good as me at other games, okay? But that's because he plays certain kind of games more than, than I do, and he plays certain games less than I do. Um... But, you know, I'm watching these... And by the way, it's not just this one person. I've been watching other people who consider gaming YouTubers put out videos. And they're not so different from me. In fact, a lot of them, it almost feels like they're kind of emulating me for the stuff I used to do before I became a full-time streamer. Yet they're successful on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, they retained a big viewership. They put out videos that still get tens of thousands of views per video. And it's like... What did I do different? And the answer is nothing. The truth of the matter is nothing. What happened is during that era of disgusting toxicity where people just wanted to bring me down, it became a meme to hate on me. My YouTube business was destroyed by troll activities between the years of 2015 to 2016. It's just fact. And it just became a viral meme to hate on Dark Side Phil. And because of that, now I am where I am. If that viral meme of, you know, this is how you don't play and all that nasty shit had never started, then I probably would still be able to be a full-time YouTuber to this day. I'm telling you, you know, even though YouTube revenue has plummeted dramatically, probably I'd still be able to make a living being a full-time YouTuber because that's how good it was, you know, with views and everything back in the day. No, I don't think that any YouTuber can make it not doing commentary. You have to have commentary over gameplay in order to survive. All right. What I would say is I think that sadly my journey on YouTube and Twitch and all of this has been very different than a lot of other people's. All right. My journey, sadly, is one where I have been harassed constantly since 2012, 2013. For, at first, I would say legitimate gameplay reasons. 
And then after that, just because people are so disgusting on the internet and they realized for so long they can get away with beating me up and bullying me, I have no recourse against it. So let's just keep beating up on Phil because we get popularity from it. You see what I'm saying? So I feel that if that shit had not happened, I could very much still be a YouTuber and it would be viable to be a gaming YouTuber today. They don't even have the things I have, yet they're, they're crazy popular on YouTube and I'm not. Figure that one out. Oh, yeah, that's right, because it's the black cloud of toxic shitheads who follow me that make me, you know, not an attractive candidate for someone who wants to watch a gaming YouTuber. That these other YouTubers got those views, those organic thousands upon thousands of views that used to come around near the end of the year for me all went to other YouTube channels. You know, they went somewhere. People didn't just disappear. They went to watch something else. And he says, do you regret telling people that you have gout? Besides, besides you being fat, which is hilarious because I'm not fat, but there'd be many, there, would be, there would not be many things detractors could use against you. Um, are you out of your mind? The, of, of all the things that people say about me, like gout is like the least insulting at all. Um, I don't really care about it anymore. I've talked about it publicly a million times. There's this stupid meme that my, my laugh sounds like ack, ack, ack. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I laugh, do I say ack, 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 ack? No, I don't. I say, ha, 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 Or, you know, <laughs> or little things like that. It depends on what's going on in the game. But I never, never say ack, ack, ack. I've never said it once ever. As for you saying I'm fat, I'm not. Am I overweight? Sure. Am I fat? Like, oh my god. Blubberish? No, I'm not. OG Rascal, little hundred bit chases. Could you elaborate more on where YouTube went wrong? No. Tom Bone tip me a dollar. Says, do you ever get tired of being the victim? Yeah, every day. I don't ever want to be a victim. I never wanted to be, but I, sadly, I am. You know, um, I want to just be a, a positive content creator. I'm, I am absolutely hundred percent tired of being mistreated, tired of being attacked, tired of being slandered and defamed on a daily fucking basis by people. But they keep doing it. I didn't put myself into the situation. Others did. You know, I don't want to be like this. I never, by the way, never really cared or talked about shit like this until it started really negatively affecting my life years ago. That was not my fault. 